Hello, young mathematicians. Today, we will explore another fascinating aspect of mathematics, patterns of shapes. Just like number sequences, shape sequences have rules and patterns that mathematicians love to study. Let's dive in and discover the amazing world of shapes. We can observe such patterns in one dimension, or two dimension, or three dimension, or even in higher dimensions. The branch of mathematics where we study shapes and their patterns is called geometry. Here we have a series of shapes called regular polygons. A polygon is a flat shape with straight sides. When we say regular polygon, it means all sides of the shape are of equal length and all its angles are equal too. We will study more above angles in the upcoming videos. Let's look at these polygons one by one. The first shape is a regular triangle, also known as an equilateral triangle, with three sides. Next, we have a square, a regular quadrilateral with four sides. The shape with five sides is a regular pentagon. With six sides, we have a regular hexagon. The shape with seven sides is a regular heptagon. The octagon has eight sides. The nonagon has nine sides. The decagon with 10 sides comes next. And finally, we have an hendecagon with 11 sides. Notice how the number of sides of these polygons increases by counting numbers, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. This pattern continues, and you can keep adding sides infinitely. Here, for example, we jump to a polygon with 100 sides, called a hectagon. This shows a fascinating relationship between shapes and numbers. The number of sides of these regular polygons follows the sequence of counting numbers, linking geometry and arithmetic together in a beautiful way. Here we can see a series of complete graphs. A complete graph is a shape in which every point or vertex is connected to every other point by a line. We start with the complete graph for two points called K2. Here we have just one line connecting the two points. Next we have K3, the complete graph with three points. Every point connects to every other point, forming a triangle with three lines. Then we move to K4 with four points. Here, every point connects to all three other points, giving us six lines. For K5, we have five points, with each point connected to four others. This results in 10 lines. Finally, we have K6 with six points. Each point is connected to five others, creating 15 lines in total. If you look closely, you'll notice a pattern. The number of lines in each complete graph corresponds to the triangular number sequence. 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, and so on. This is because, in a complete graph, each new point connects to all the previous points, adding lines in a way that mirrors how triangular numbers are formed. So, complete graphs offer a great visual way to understand triangular numbers. Now here we can see a series of shapes called stacked squares. Each shape is made up of smaller squares arranged into a larger square. Let's start with the first shape. It has just one small square. Next, we have a shape with four small squares arranged into a two by two square. Then, we have nine small squares arranged into a three by three square, followed by 16 small squares in a four by four square. Finally, we have 25 small squares arranged in a five by five square. If you observe carefully, each of these shapes represents a square number. A square number is the result of multiplying a number by itself. For example, one square is one times one, four squares are two times two, nine squares are three times three, 16 squares are four times four, and 25 squares are five times five. So when we stack these small squares to form bigger squares, we can visually see how square numbers grow. Each time, the number of squares increases in a way that matches the pattern of square numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. This visual pattern helps us understand the concept of square numbers in a fun and engaging way. Let's explore this interesting arrangement of stacked triangles. We start with a single small triangle. In the next step, we add three more triangles directly beneath it. Then, we add five more triangles in the third step and seven in the fourth, and so on. If we observe closely, the number of triangles added in each new row follows an odd number pattern. One, three, five, seven, and so on. But here is something even more fascinating. The total number of triangles in each complete shape follows a square number pattern. When we have one row, we have one triangle. With two rows, we have a total of four triangles. 
With three rows, the total is nine triangles, and with four rows, the total becomes 16 triangles. The numbers 1, 4, 9, 16 are all perfect squares. This happens because as we add each new row of triangles in increasing odd numbers, the overall shape forms a larger triangle that grows both wider and taller, forming a perfect square pattern in terms of the total count of triangles. So what we're seeing is how adding triangles in an odd number sequence creates shapes whose total number of triangles matches the square numbers. It's a wonderful example of how patterns in mathematics can reveal surprising connections. Let's take a look at the Koch snowflake, a fascinating example of a fractal in mathematics. The Koch snowflake begins with a simple equilateral triangle, which is our starting shape for iteration n equals zero. This triangle has three sides. At each subsequent step or iteration, a new smaller triangle is added to the middle of every existing side. For example, in iteration n equals one, each of the three sides of the original triangle is divided into three equal parts, and an equilateral triangle is added in the middle of each side. This step gives us a shape with 12 sides. In iteration n equals 2, the same process is repeated on all 12 sides of the shape. Again, each side is divided into three parts, and an equilateral triangle is added to the middle of each segment, resulting in a total of 48 sides. As we continue this process, the number of sides increases dramatically. At iteration n equals 3, we now have 192 sides, and by iteration n equals 4, the number of sides grows to 768. If we observe closely, the number of sides follows a specific arithmetic pattern. Mathematically, we can express the number of sides at each step as 3 times 4 raised to the power of the iteration number, n. For example, at n equals 1, we have 3 times 4 to the power of 1, which equals 12 sides. At n equals 2, we have 3 times 4 to the power of 2, which equals 48 sides, and so on. The Koch snowflake is a remarkable shape because as we continue to add smaller and smaller triangles, the perimeter of the shape increases infinitely, but the area remains finite. This illustrates the beautiful and often counterintuitive nature of fractals, where simple rules and patterns can create complex and infinite forms. Patterns are everywhere. From the sequences of numbers to the shapes we see, patterns reveal the hidden beauty of mathematics in our daily lives. By exploring number sequences and their connections to geometric shapes, we uncover fascinating relationships and surprising discoveries. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of patterns in mathematics. We began by exploring patterns in numbers and number sequences, and then we looked at how these sequences relate to patterns in shapes. We hope this exploration has inspired you to keep finding and learning about patterns around you. Who knows what amazing patterns you'll discover next. Thanks for watching and keep discovering the magic of mathematics.